Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fugit Blitz. Today we're going to have a look at the charioteer. Not how to play the charioteer, but the real charioteer and compare it to the one in the game. Interestingly, this is a post-war tank. It came into service in 1952 and fell out of service and was finally retired in 1980. But it wasn't just a British tank. And this is the version in the game that we have. It's a tier 8 British TD. And that is the first mistake. This tank was never a tank destroyer, oddly enough. It was actually a tank. It was a medium cruiser tank. But we'll get onto that later. In the game when this was first released, it was notorious as everybody said it was overpowered. And that got me thinking. Okay, so we have an overpowered tank in the game. What was the real tank actually like? Well, surprising. It was truly shocking. This tank was never OP. Developed by the British, they, they very rarely used it. The only, develop, the only people that used this tank in the British was actually the Territorial Army. So it was never actually given to a regular tank unit, which I just find utterly ironic. The tank itself was built in both a hurry and was completely improvised. This tank came into development because after the war, the British felt that they were going to go to war again, and this time with the Russians. They actually drew up plans on how to attack the Russians in Germany. Oddly enough, it would have been a disaster. The thing was, at the end of the war, the British still had this, the Cromwell tank, a very successful tank for them during the war, mainly because of its engine and suspension unit and that gun, which didn't struggle as much as people thought. However, this is a 75mm gun, and at the time, IS-3s were coming around, and boy, they had thicker armour, whereby this little 75mm gun would just tickle those little IS-3s without penetrating them whatsoever. So a chap called Major General Duncan, who was the director of the Royal Armoured Corps, in other words, he was in charge of all the tanks for the British Army, suggested taking the recently developed 84mm or 20 pounder gun that had been developed for this tank, the Centurion, which was effectively being designed at that stage, and plonking it on top of a Cromwell chassis. Seemed a good idea at the time. And the thing is, the, uh, the gun, once they decided to put it into its sort of turret ring, it would never marry with the Cromwell chassis because it was too tiny. So initially, they enlarged the turret ring on the Cromwell, but that didn't solve the problem because the gun was too big and they couldn't elevate it or depress it. So what they had to do, they had to make this massively huge turret. And boy, it is big. And it had to be, because without this turret, they couldn't lift the gun above the turret ring. And without it being lifted above the turret ring, they could get zero elevation and zero depression, which led to this large turret. However, they also discovered that with the proposed plan that they had for this turret, it would make the tank super heavy and the turret would effectively squish the hull of the poor Cromwell that it was being married to. So they came up with a really ingenious idea. That was to basically put no armour whatsoever on the turret. The front of the turret is about 40 millimetres thick and the sides about 25 millimetres. So, you know, unless you were a man with a catapult firing stones, the chances are you're going to pen this thing. So if you were crewing this thing, you were either ultra stupid or ultra brave. They even got rid of the whole machine gunner. They needed to. They needed the space for this new turret and stupidly big gun. The hull itself was effectively a, an unmodified version of the Cromwell, aside from getting rid of the machine gunner and widening uh, at that turret ring. And um, the hull of the Cromwell is actually really good. It had the same Rolls-Royce Meteor engine and the same Christie suspension, which for a Cromwell as a medium tank 
was fantastic. But when you mount a turret this large with a gun that big, it basically ruins the entire thing. And the hull, that really good stuff that the Cromwell had, was rendered useless. Problems, however, didn't stop there. The gun itself was incredibly powerful. It was one of the best anti-tank guns the British made at this period. The problem was, in this thing, with, with the way it worked, it was absolutely useless. With one story doing the rounds that when, you, when the gunner fired it, it created so much smoke, the commander had to literally get out of the turret, walk about five metres away from the tank to see what they were shooting at and if they'd hit it, and then relay back to the crew in the tank who would relay to the gunner where to aim. And the gunner, bless him, had no clue what he was firing at or where he was firing other than what they were telling him. I mean, that's just utterly ridiculous. One of the most interesting parts of this tank, however, is the following. In the game Blitz and World of Tanks, this is designated a tank destroyer in the British line. It's not a tank destroyer. The British actually designated this tank as a cruiser, which is effectively a medium tank. Why? Because it has a coaxially mounted machine gun. And anything with a machine gun that is coaxially mounted, i.e. neck to the main gun, is in fact a tank. So, sorry Wargaming, it's not a TD. Interestingly, David Fletcher, the renowned tank historian who used to be at Bovington Tank Museum, considers this one of the worst tanks ever produced. He actually lists it in his top five of worst tanks ever produced by the British and he even goes too far to say that the tank was just a stupid idea and a really silly tank indeed. Interestingly, whilst the British used them for the Territorial Army, they sold them mainly to the Austrians, the Finns and majority of Middle Eastern countries like Jordan, Syria etc. And it did actually see action in the Six Day War Although, unsurprisingly, it really was poor and it had little effect. So, that's the Charioteer's brief history, guys. One of the worst tanks, according to some, produced by the British. It's in the game. It's, it was seen initially as OP. Clearly, in real life, it was anything but. I hope you enjoyed that little brief walk down historical lane. Hi, I've been Fujit. That has been the Charioteer. If you enjoyed it, please comment and like and all the other stuff below. If you haven't yet, press subscribe. Lovely thing to do. If you got any decent replays, send them to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. And don't forget, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.